Look after the land and the land will look after you. Destroy the land and it will destroy you. If I understood this properly, the seemingly simple aboriginal proverb incites our urge to give back to the environment and participate in something greater than ourselves. Greetings, I'm Himanshu Rao Kalvakuntla, a student of grade 10 Oak Ridge International School. And I'm here to deliver a short speech on climate change and how we can tackle it while committing ourselves to environmentally sustainable practices. Climate change is a broad term used to refer to the changes of Earth's climates in regional, local and global scales. It also refers to the effects of these changes. The term climate change is most often used to describe changes in Earth's climate driven primarily by human activity post-industrial period after 1850, such as the burning of fossil fuels and deforestation. This resulted in a relatively rapid increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the Earth's atmosphere. Over the years, the climate of the Earth has changed considerably. The Earth is warming. Small changes like increase in the average temperature is leading to dangerous shifts in the climate and weather. This is quite evident from the fact that there have been significant changes in the patterns of rainfall at certain places. These have resulted in droughts, floods or intense rains. The oceans are warming and becoming more acidic. The glaciers are melting, leading to rise in sea levels. Global climate change has led to variations in seasons, which have further led to changes in the behavior of different species. If we don't understand these hints, nature will continue to plague us with trouble until we understand. Numbers may make us understand the gravity of the situation. The concentration of carbon dioxide has risen from 280 parts per million to 413 parts per million as of 2020. The concentration of carbon dioxide is unprecedented in recorded history. Scientists have reported that we need to return to a safe concentration of 350 ppm by 2100 in order to stabilize the global warming. Environmental sustainability is the responsibility to conserve natural resources and to protect the global ecosystems to support health and well-being now and in the future. In simple words, we can define environmental sustainability as meeting today's needs without compromising the ability of, of the future generation to meet their needs. This leads us to a question. As an evolutionary species, how should we change the way we live and conduct business to ensure it's sustainable for our future generations? As the great scientist Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking used when we created them. We created many problems in the pursuit of development. Hence, we need to use different thinking in the process to achieve environmental sustainability. A learned author, Robert Swan, once rightly said that a greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Due to all human activities, our planet has reached unsustainable levels. Therefore, it is our responsibility to control the damage. Individuals, governments, industries, non-profits, environmental agencies, everyone can and should play a significant role in this solution. First and foremost, we the people living on this beautiful earth have to hold ourselves accountable for our actions. That is how we're going to protect it. If we fail to do so, our future generations are going to never forgive us. Climate change requires urgent policy action from the government side. Although the climate change policies are being mainly discussed at international level by means of the United Nations Convention and the Kyoto Protocol, the bulk of impact is felt at regional and local levels. Legislative innovation is the need of the hour. The following are a few policy suggestions that I would like to share with you all. Most of them are self-explanatory. Number one. Climate tax. People must realize the cost of inaction. Citizens have to be responsible with the usage of AC and multiple cars. Asking irresponsible citizens to pay a climate tax will yield good results. Number two, encouraging electric vehicles. I'm very proud to say that my state Telangana has launched Telangana Electric Vehicle and Energy Storage Policy 2020 to 2030 for a clean and green Telangana with the aim of making the state a leading EV manufacturing destination. Number three, being smart about alternative sources of power and nuclear power and drafting policies related to their production and use. Governments can play a big role by enacting policies that encourage a speedy transition to clean 
energy as wind and solar. Number four, the public transport policy. The public transport policy makes it easier for the citizens to live without their cars. A single bus can take out 40 cars off road. Number five, sustainable urban planning. Urbanization is the order of the day. The need of the hour is to have the right policies and to follow practical methods to create sustainable cities. Encouraging simple living and planting trees. Trees absorb carbon dioxide and produce oxygen into the atmosphere, which will give way, way much help to tackle climate change. Number seven, climate change discussions in classrooms. Education is an essential element to the global response of climate change. It increases climate literacy among the young people, encourages their attitude towards the climate change, and helps them adapt to the climate-related trends. The list goes on. We never know the worth of water until the well is dry, they say. Climate change is not far from the problem. We need to realize it is happening now and respond before it's too late. We need to be answerable for our future generations.